Hello, welcome to Telecom TV. We are in London, the City of London, at the Great Telco Debate 2019, and I'm talking with Nigel Stevenson, Director of Marketing Development, EMEA, Telco and Edge Cloud Business Unit at VMware. Uh, let's get straight into it. Let's talk about cloud native. Um, do you think cloud native is a must do or would be nice to do for CSPs as a transition towards becoming digital service providers accelerates? It's, it's an undisputed direction of travel. Um, so in that sense, yes, I think, uh, I think the fact that we will get there is, an, an, is undisputed. I think the question is, how do we get there and how long would that take? And um, bearing in mind that in order to be, and depending on what we mean by cloud native, but let's say by cloud native, we're talking about microservices, containers, Kubernetes, um, then uh, yes, what we can do is we can enable that journey. So from a VMware point of view, our focus is on enabling the infrastructure to take the service providers from where they are now in a virtualized environment, mm -hmm to a cloud native containerized environment and the transition from one to the other. We're not looking at the step change. So our job is to make sure we can deliver the platform that takes service providers from where they are now to a cloud native environment. And we're doing that and we announced some products over the last two, two VM worlds. We, we covered some projects, we talked about projects, I'm not going to them now, but we talked about Project uh, Pacific. We talked about Tanzu Mission Control, which is all around embedding containers and Kubernetes into, into how we operate. Um, and we also released Project Maestro, which is an orchestration environment which covers both VNF and CNFs. So we're building the platform to move from where we are to where we need to get to. What we need to do is also um, be aware that for operators to move to that environment, they need the applications to run on them. Yeah, They need the CNFs. And that is still evolving. There are very few genuine cloud native network functions available. And so there is a timeline between getting from where we are now to, to ultimately where we aspire to be. You mentioned orchestration and containers, and you also mentioned apps. Let's cover those in a bit more detail, Nigel. What about orchestration then? What, what, what's the state of play? So uh, from a VMware perspective, we, we've just announced recently Project Maestro, which is a, a, an orchestration solution, which we are bringing to market to cover both the current NFV virtualization use case uh, for existing VNF ma uh, management, if you like, to manage those environments, uh, but also as part of that understanding that we need to manage things in what we might call a modern apps way. So the, the more cloud native way, containerized microservices way. So the intention of Project Maestro is actually to allow service providers to build on what they've delivered so far in an NFV virtualized way, mm -hmm. and then continue that journey on towards cloud native under a single orchestration environment. What about, again, you mentioned containers there, a lot of discussion, a lot of debate about Kubernetes, containerization, and so forth. Again, where are you at, where are you at with VM well, where, at, as far as that's concerned? Yeah, so if you, if you look at, if you take a step back, and, and there's a lot of, let me say, there's a lot of advantages to moving towards containers. As I say earlier, it's a, it's a direction of travel. Yeah. Um, there are reasons behind that. They're faster spin up, they're, they're small footprint, etc. So that translates into a number of benefits from an operator and indeed an enterprise point of view um, between operational solution or production solutions and from, from a Dev, DevOps perspective. Um, however, there are still a set of challenges around deploying those environments, building them, running them, managing them at an ongoing basis. So if we look at what we've done for the virtualized world in VMs, a lot of the the, the in intelligence, if you like, around how we run those environments maps to a degree into a container, containerized world as well. So what we need to do is we need to in ensure that as we move towards containers, it becomes as simple to deploy and manage those environments as we've been able to, to make the vir uh, virtual machine. So a couple of ways we're looking at that. Uh, one is Project Pacific. Project Pacific is embedding containers into the vSphere environment. So that it's taking everything we've done from a virtual machine perspective and translating that or transposing that as we move forward into containers and then being able to operate both virtual machines and containers in the same environment. Uh, and another key element is what we call Tanzu Mission Control, which is uh, a, a solution to, to, at a higher order to, to manage the overall environment, um, not just within a private environment, but across multiple clouds. You mentioned managing modern apps. Mm. 
I'm not going to say what's the difference between modern apps and old apps, but why do you specify modern apps in this case? Well, well modern apps, really, it, it, it's all about definitions, I guess. The, the, when we talk about modern apps, what, what we're acknowledging is that applications today are being very much disaggregated to a level that has not been the case before. Um, this is one of the challenges at the higher order level when we look at network functions, moving from a virtual network function to a containerized network function. Um, the disaggregation of those services and those applications down to microservices, which of which the chosen delivery message method would be containers, um, that is a very different environment to build and to run to manage from the ones we've, we've run in the past. And, and so that, in, in essence, is what we're referring to as, as modern apps, is how do, we, how do we build, run, manage applications that are built in that microservices container-based uh, world. Can we talk use cases? Um, what use cases do you think, do you believe, will generate near-term revenue opportunities for CSPs out at the edge, wherever the edge may be? Yeah, um, I, I'm not going to be brave enough to give an absolute use case. Uh, I think I can talk in generalities. We had a good discussion actually at the uh, the Great Telco debate uh, this week. Um, I think the the challenge in front of the the operators of CSPs as we stand now is is that we're building with 5G, with network slicing, with in massively increased levels of automation, enhanced by things like modern apps and how we deliver them. Uh, that is generating a really powerful toolkit. The challenge is how do you then use that toolkit to construct services that become high value to your customer so that the brand of the CSP becomes dominant, if you like, in the relation, or at least more dominant than it currently is. Mm. Um, and, and those services are perceived to be higher value and, and therefore higher margin. Um, so I think the, the position we're at right now is we're very well along the line of building the toolkit. How do we take that and deliver it into the customer base in a way that is perceived as high value? And I think the answer is somewhere in the area of verticalized services into the enterprise, the business sector. Um, and the question for me is very much how are service providers going to respond in terms of developing the skills and the sales motions to be able to take more tailored services into different parts of the enterprise industry sectors um, that then, uh, then are, are seen as high value by those end customers. Nigel, do you think CSP should regard the hyperscalers as competitors or potential future business partners? I don't think regarding them as competitors has ever worked. <laughs> um, so I think that's a, that's a fairly straightforward one. I think, yeah, increasingly as business partners, and that's one of the tricks, is, is, is we're going to move into an ecosystem increasingly. We've, we're seeing it in terms of building the technology and how service providers acquire technology. Uh, and I think it increasingly is going to be part of how they deliver services as well. How do you think CSP vendor business models need to adapt to accelerate telco transformation? Well, I can speak from a VMware perspective, and as I mentioned before, I think the, the role we aspire to play is to provide the path along which the service providers can travel. So from our perspective, that means making sure we can support what they're doing today and ensuring that there is a, a way forward, a, a non-disruptive way forward as it evolves to, to not just what we now perceive as cloud native, but whatever comes beyond there as well. So that's where we're really focusing is, you know, there's been a lot of success um, in terms of our customer base, certainly in, in terms of deploying NFV based services, we need to help service providers move that architecture forward. Uh, and that's where the focus of our, uh, our developments are at the moment. What's the level of cloud native knowledge and awareness that you can see from your telco customers? What sort of state are they in, Nigel? It's, um, it, it's, it's really, I think it's, I, it's really difficult, I think, for service providers um, to undergo the transformation that is currently happening. Again, I, I've said before, the, the transition from physical to virtual I think is is an easier transition, both from a vendor point of view and I think a consumer or you know a customer point of view, than the transition from virtual to cloud native. Mm. Um, so I think that yeah, that we're, we're seeing uh, everybody, you know, people are at different levels. We're seeing some quite advanced deployments and understanding. Uh, I think within operators, there's still a very great 
variant variance in terms of the level of understanding and knowledge and uh, and and this boils down to practical things like teams organization processes and so on so uh, even at the virtualized level i think that knowledge and that skill that skill base and the reorganization of, and, and the reestablishment of processes is still ongoing uh, and that is that is going to be magnified as we go towards cloud native which is why I, I think this has to be seen as a journey um, and, and not a, a not a sort of a step change. Okay. Nigel Stevenson, thanks very much. Thank you.